Well, again, we want to welcome you to be with us and share with Tyler and Molly today this special day. And uh, I guess we'll start with a song here as Molly comes down the aisle here. So if everyone will stand, we'll... All right, let's, let's bow our heads and we'll say a prayer. Father, we come before you this morning and we thank you again for your goodness and your mercy to us, Lord. We just thank you for all that you do for us. Help us to be faithful to you. Lord, we ask your blessing upon Molly and Tyler as they begin their new life together. Help us all to do your will, Father. We just, again, thank you for all that you do for us. Again, uh, we ask your blessing. Fill us with your spirit today and help us be faithful. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Errol may be seated. Hello everyone. My name is Jason Sykes. I'm Molly's father. I'd like to first say thank you to everyone who helped make this day a special day for Tyler and Molly. It's usually the bride father that comes up and does an opening joke and tells a heart-filling story about their daughter. Well, I'm not too good at this, but those who know me know that I should have had this master by the time my youngest one gets married, Lord willing. Okay, now that the opening joke is over with, let's <laughs> go ahead and get to the heartfelt story. The day Molly was born, I knew that God had given Robin and I a wonderful blessing. Molly was a beautiful baby. She always wore a big smile and knew how to make a boring day exciting. Sorry. Throughout this crazy journey I put my family through, she always wore that beautiful smile and had a good attitude about it all. But I have to say, ever since Tyler came up and asked to marry Molly, she's worn even a bigger smile. <laughs> she's so excited to start this new chapter in her life, to be your helper and be your best friend. Molly, we love you and we're gonna miss having you at home and having you there daily. But I'm glad you're gonna be happy. Tyler, today I give you Molly's hand. May God bless both of you guys. Thank you, brother. Now I'd like to call on Marcus Roar to lead us into the opening songs. We're going to sing the first four hymns in our program. 
beginning with Al Trace, my maker.
word obey.
assignment uh, that they're going to come up here and give some thoughts that um, some thoughts they have for us. One by one, come up here to the mic, boys. Give it to us. This week we're supposed to bring an example of a way we could practice to prefer our future wife, if we have one, better than ourselves. And I was just thinking this week, if I just prefer other people, just customers at the shop, friends, neighbors, better than myself, it can help prepare me for that day if it comes. I was thinking just for like my family around the house, I could just for practice just whenever they need something that just it just kind of throws out or doesn't exactly go along with whatever I was thinking. I could just prefer them and everybody else more than my own wishes just so I could love them more than myself. We should love our wives like Jesus loved the church. I was thinking as I'm working and living my life where I'm at now, I can just work at loving those around me and doing what I know is best. Um, I was thinking this week, uh, Matthew, it says, uh, do unto others you would have them do unto you. Um, and if I treat other people like I, to be, like, I like to be treated, um, that would help me a lot. I was thinking I could work at putting others first right now and learn ways how to get along with people, how to make people happy now, and just take the step right in front of me and that should prepare me for the day. One way I thought about it is just to love my neighbor as myself and prepare myself for what the trials may come. One thing I can work on to prepare me is to be out for others because when you get married it's a giving thing and you're committing your life to the other person and you're going to live through everything with them for better or for worse. To love your wife more than yourself is just to take the hard things yourself and just get them under control and just give your wife the best. To 
love my wife more than myself in the future, I can just put others first and just I, like not care if I don't get the best thing, put others first. Savior, that thy love lays hold of me. What a blessing. That's the reason. 506.
<clears throat> All right. Again, blessing to be here this morning. Beautiful music and the, the thoughts that are in those songs. And a real blessing to just be here to celebrate this time that Tyler and Molly join themselves together and become one. Let's go to the Lord in prayer again. <clears throat> Father, we come before you this morning and we just ask your blessing upon this time together. We ask your blessing on Tyler and Molly. Father, that you would help them to be faithful to you as they grow together, live together. Lord, we just ask that you would give us wisdom, Father, as we open your word. Help us to follow your spirit and your guidance. Lord, again, we just thank you for all that you do for us. Fill us with your spirit and help us be faithful to you. And bring glory to you in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to begin reading in Matthew chapter 5, verse 22. It says... Wives, be subject to your husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ also is the head of the church, he himself being the Savior of the body. But as the church is subject to Christ, so also the wives ought to be to their husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself up for her so that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of the water by the word, that he might present to himself the church in all her glory, having no spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that he would be holy, but that she would be holy and blameless. So husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. He also, he who loves his own wife loves himself. Stop right there. This is a blessed thing, blessed time that is finds its beginning in the Bible. From the very creation. In Genesis chapter three it says that that he saw a man and he was dwelling alone and it wasn't good. And so he created a helpmeet for him. This is, uh, you know, people, we live in a time where God is forgotten, if not mocked, in most circles, in most places in this world. Religion has just become a business, just a money-making opportunity for scoundrels. It's just become all kinds of different things and there's a lot of confusion in the world but like I've said before a Christian is what God intended him to be whenever he created man he's not some super thing that was created trying to outdo everyone else God made a man and that's all a man, and he created a woman to be his helper. When you look at the fundamentals of Christianity, you know, we can all have different creeds and doctrines and thoughts and ideas, but I've told people before, if you can't be a man, you can't be a Christian. And if you can't be a woman, you can't be a Christian. Because that's what God made you for. And that's what he intended from the very beginning. And when Christ came and set us free from the bondage of the fall of what Satan had us bound in, God restored us back to being what he made us to be in the first place. And that's been taken every direction. From some holy man sitting up on top of a hill 
that isolates himself from the whole world to just trying to pattern themselves after the world. I, we worked a place, we had a job recently and was at a church we were working on and I saw one of the youth pastors and he came out and he had purple hair and all kinds of just wild looking, just trying to impress the young people. And I just, I, I, it's sad that whenever the leaders are trying to impress the children, instead of being an example to them of being a man and being a woman. That's what this world needs today, is someone to be a man and someone to be a woman. We live in a world where everybody's confused. Boys don't know whether they're boys and girls don't know whether they're boys. And they're just tossed with the wind of opinion instead of being what God made them and created them to be. There's a lot of confusion in the world, a lot of fear in the world. But God made a man, and he made a woman. <clears throat> Jesus said, fear not, little flock. Tyler, Molly, fear not. It's his pleasure to give us the kingdom. <clears throat> Tyler has expressed fear, and I know other people have the same fears. But just a few days ago, he just, he just said, I, I don't know about this. He said, I don't know about bringing children into the world and the situation that it's in. There's wars and rumors of wars and fear and chaos all around us. That's the world. God had a bigger plan. He created a man and a woman. You know, I've talked with Tyler quite a bit, worked with him, and if you know Tyler very well, his mind goes about 16 times faster than yours does. That's not a good thing, believe it or not. Okay. And one of the things that I have constantly remind him of, and it always brings him, he gets to thinking 16 steps ahead out of himself and gets scared to death of what's out there. And I tell him, Tyler. Step right in front of you. The step right in front of you is all you have to worry about. And if you take that step, then you can take the second step. And then you can take the third, and then you can get to the 16th step. But if you don't take that first step because you're worried about step 16 down the road, you're going to fall flat on your face. And Tyler's fell flat on his face a few times. But he's learning. And there's a helper, Molly. You need to remind him of that. Just take the step right in front of you. You'll see the look on his face whenever he gets a little confused, worried about the next step, and he'll dwell on it for an day and a night. And you'll see that dark cloud come over him. You learn to recognize that early. You're his helper. You learn to recognize that whenever he starts worrying about it. Bring him back to the ground. Back to step one, the next step in front of him. He's real good at it. He does what's in front of him as well as anybody I know as long as he stays right there. But if he gets off very far ahead, he can mess up that step just about as good as anybody I know too. So you keep him there. That's your job. I charge you with that. I'll be there to help you all I can, but keep him there. The next step. 
You know, we live in this world of fear. Things, you know, all you have to do is listen to the news and they'll scare you to death and keep you scared. That's where Satan wants us. In a state of fear and panic. But that's not what God intends for us. These songs we sing about God, the picture of God, there's a good God. There's a good God. And He doesn't demand anything that you can't do. He just wants you to do the next step in front of you. And we see the world and it's chaos. And I look at it and then I look at some of these young people that have been brought up in a godly church and a godly home. You know, the fear that the world has. Tyler was scared. He didn't know what to do. Didn't know even know if he wanted to go through this or not. But that's not the way of a man. The man takes the next step right in front of him. The Bible says, you know, we see the world and its chaos and all the bad things that are going on around us. And God has a remedy for the world. It's called light. You know, we think about Sodom and Gomorrah, you know. I always have heard and always think, you know, well, how could times be any worse than they are right now? But you don't have to go back. You can just read it. Men have been bad. The world's been bad all the way through. There's been confusion in men and women all the way through history. It's there. And in Sodom and Gomorrah, God said he was going to destroy the place because of its wickedness. But Abraham heard about it and he said, God, if there's 50 righteous people there, will you destroy it? God said no. And then he went through 45 and 40 and 30 and 20 and 10 and Abraham said, God, if there's 10 people there, Will you destroy it? And he said, no. You see, God didn't destroy Sodom because of its wickedness. God destroyed it because the light was gone. There wasn't enough people there to preserve the world. And it didn't take very many. We know the history where he did destroy it. He pulled his people out and destroyed it. All that would leave. He tried to call them out. God's good. He's trying to call us to a better and higher way. The way a man faces his fear is to be the light of the world. It's a lonely thing sometimes because there's not very many people want to be it. There's not many people like it. They don't want it. They're comfortable in their fear. It takes courage and faith to be the light of the world. And the best weapon you all have for what's going on all around you to be the light right in your own home right with yourselves if that's all there is the next step is to be the light of the world and you are that right now you've taken the proper steps you've kept yourselves I mean today when marriage means nothing People just live with each other, do whatever, in and out, whatever. You're a light to the world. This is a blessing, a special thing, a privilege. And so by not doing anything great, but just taking the next step of how you were instructed and how you were taught, how people who care about you have guided you. 
you've accomplished something most of the world will never know. Jesus is coming after a bride. A spotless bride. One that's ready and waiting for him. And while most of us have messed up our lives and done a lot of things we shouldn't have, there's redemption in the Lord. There's forgiveness and there's cleansing. A lot of people talk about forgiveness with no cleansing, but that's, that doesn't work. What Jesus forgives and as we come to him, he will cleanse us. And we can be that. We can be what he wants us to be. You know, I said before, <clears throat> we look at the world and how bad it is. People say, well, how can there be a God with all these things going on around us? All these bad things. With all that bad in the world, that tells me that there is a God. Because if there's bad, there can be good. Just as bad as the world can be, there can be good. And that's what he's called us to be. He's called us to be men. Good men. Godly men. You know, the Bible talks about be ye therefore perfect. And we think of the word perfect as without a mistake, without, without any errors. And that's not what God's talking about when he talks about perfect. It's being perfect. It's being what God wants us to be. Being perfect is being where you're at right now and taking the step that is right in front of you. That's perfect. You can have a perfect marriage. That doesn't mean there won't be disagreements. That doesn't mean there won't be times of trouble. But being perfect is learning from those things and taking the next step, walking right on. Tyler don't like change. Things get changed a little bit. He gets all disordered. But that change, a lot of times, is the next step. And you've got to take that step. Get out of your comfort zone and just take the step right in front of you. The Bible talks about the husband being the head of the home. You know, a lot of people think that, well, that means he's a bully. Well, that means he's in charge and everybody's going to listen to him or my way or the highway. Well, that's not what it means. You know, the Bible also says that for the husband's prayers to be observed that he should treat his wife as the weaker vessel. A lot of times being strong takes patience and courage. Giving people the opportunity and the time to think things through. So sometimes when you got an idea and she don't like it or she's got an idea and you don't like it, just step back. You don't have to fix it right now. If it does come down to a time, I think it's your responsibility, Molly, to just surrender and submit to him. Let him make a mistake once in a while. Or find out that, yeah, he was right all along. 
You know, a lot of times Tyler is right. And I've had to show him several times that just because he's right don't mean he's right. He can be real right and be way wrong. And he usually comes to the right realization. But you get it sometimes it takes time. And then you'll find out that, wow, he probably was right in the first place. Husbands love your wives. You know, I've mentioned this often. We read these verses where it says, wives submit to your husband, and the husband reaches over and elbows his wife and say, listen to that. And then the verse comes and says, husbands love your wives. And the wife elbows her husband. Say, listen to that. You see, we often, often hear the message that's for somebody else. But not very often we hear the part that's for ourselves. Jesus never forces anyone to submit to him. Submission is a part of our will. And it is nothing. If you, if you take that will away, then you're Satan. Because that's what he wants to do. When we choose to follow the Lord and follow his path, it's because we've chosen to. My sheep hear my voice and they follow me. I had a message several years ago that Jesus is a shepherd, not a sheepdog. running around the pasture biting at us, trying to make sure we stay where we're supposed to. A lot of religions that way. Jesus is a shepherd. He leads the way. And we follow him. You are the light of the world. That's a heavy, heavy task. The whole world's. The world's hope is for somebody to be the light. You don't have to make a lot of noise. You don't have to make a lot of heat. You be the light. And that's all that God requires of us. He may call us to go through some hard times. We may go through twice the trouble other people do. But your step is to be the light. And that's it. Be patient with one another. Love each other. Molly, you be a rock. Tyler, you be a rock too. Remember, she's the weaker vessel. You gotta be, she may look strong and may look like a rock, but she's still the weaker vessel. Be patient with her. Well, if you two will stand up here. We're going to share the vows together. I love you, Molly. I'm very, very thankful to God for you. And I'm very honored to be united to you today. I'm honored to do that before God and the people here.
And I just want to say, I'm really excited to hold your hand. And go, go down this winding trail that's life. And you're such a blessing to me. And I believe I, I need you very much. And you need me. And I want to go through the mountains and the valleys and hold your hand and be your leader. I need somebody to love. That somebody's you. I'm lost without you, Molly. And God, God led us together. I believe that. And again, I love you dearly. And I want to spend the rest of my life loving you dearly and learning how to help you. God bless you. Amen. Grab your notes if you want. I love you. You're my dearest friend. I want to love you for the rest of my life. I'm so thankful for you. I want to do, I want to be there no matter what. Do my best to be a good wife to you. And I want to become better and learn and grow with you. And learn to love you more every day. I want to love you and honor and respect you. I want to live out my love for you every day for the rest of my life. God bless you too. Turn around, face everyone. Present to you, Mr. and Mrs. Tyler Smith. <laughs> All right, you can be seated. All right, now we're going to have. Uh, open mic time. If someone has a story you'd like to share, feel free to. Just remember, there's several that will, so don't be too long winded. All right, I'm open it up. Oh, I'd just like to say we've uh, appreciated uh, Tyler coming over and spending time with us. That he, he comes over into our house and uh, visits quite often before uh, the recent developments in his life, and he'd spend a lot of time with the kids. And uh, we've 
we've always been entertained by watching him uh, interact with them. I think one of the things that I've learned from Tyler is how to how to keep the kids entertained with just about any object I can find at arm's length <laughs> for at least an hour. <laughs> and uh, he'll be at the table with uh, one of the two of them, and and it'll be like. It'll be like Sesame Street on steroids. I mean, <laughs> cups, forks, plates, all stacked up and perfectly balanced, and just keep them happy for an indefinite amount of time. And uh, it it uh, it works pretty good. I I tried it out at the dentist office last week when uh, we were waiting on Brianna in the waiting room, and all I had was a roll of dental floss and a tube of toothpaste and. Yeah, we kept them. We kept them happy for the whole ordeal. <laughs> so, uh, I just wish Tyler our our blessing and uh, and uh, just uh, thankful to be here, and I'm thankful for this day in his life. <laughs> um, for those who don't know, that is Tyler's brother-in-law. Brian and Brian has spent a lot of time with Tyler um, and I had intentions of, of coming up here and just saying I'm so thankful for everybody that has played a part in helping Tyler become who he is today because he lived with Brian for quite a while and Brian lived with us that's a long story but <laughs> that might sound kind of confusing but um, we shared kind of the same space for a while, um, but he did live with Tyler for a significant amount of time, and, and he was a real blessing, and also Wilbur's family, he lived with them, and of course David, so I just wanted to say thanks to everybody who um, has played a part in being our family and loving us. Um, I was trying to convey my thoughts to David this morning, and I asked, is this okay to say? So I don't know if I'm going to get this out right. I'm going to, I'm going to attempt it. Um, marriage, you know, it, it takes two, and it takes unconditional love, not the emotion love, but true love. And that is the kind of love um, that we, as a body, must have for each other as well. And the love that you all have shown us has just been, uh, it's from the Lord. And I'm so thankful for it. If, if y'all wouldn't have had that kind of love for us that I also see must work in a husband and wife relationship. If y'all wouldn't have shown that to us, I just, I don't think we'd be here. So, thanks again. <laughs> And I'm Tyler's mom, by the way, if I didn't say that. <laughs> Thank you all for coming. I'm Tyler's uh, uncle. Um, I had something I wanted to say, but then after listening to his uh, vows, I was just, I was stirred up. It's probably one of the most beautiful vows I've ever heard in my life. I'm so blessed to be here, and um, I love you a lot. I love you too, Uncle Carl. And we love you too. Thank you very much. And welcome to our family. Thank you. Um, man, Tyler, you made that really hard. <laughs> um, Tyler has been a, a wonderful person, and as anybody who knows Tyler, he's definitely had his struggles in life. And uh, I have some fun memories of him, too, especially when he was really small. Believe it or not, he was small once. But um, so one of my favorite memories, I'm going to share a memory with him, with you guys, is that when my wife and I were getting married, he was our ring bearer, our ring bearer. And uh, we took him out, get fitted for a tux, out to lunch. I don't know, was it two? Three? How old was he? Four years old? Four years old, yeah. Tyler's very different than he was back then, by the way. Anyway, um, so we took him out to uh, thank Godfather's Pizza. Yummy. Yeah, wow, it was. It was exciting, too, because we brought this 
little guy who had so much energy uh, with us. And uh, we're sitting there waiting for our food in him. And, it, and he's just like, hey, Uncle Carl, crush my bones. Squeeze my hands and crush my bones. You know? I'm like, what did we get, in our, get ourselves into here? Oh, man, it was, it was amazing. It, you know, Tyler was still the, just the energy that he had and his, he always had a smile on his face. And he has a great smile on his face now. So, but I've got so many stories to share. And I just want to tell you guys, I'm very proud of you guys. And I'm very proud of the community here that has aided you in your growth. And uh, it's obvious that you guys have a lot of support. And I'm glad that I was able to get the time off of work to get down here and all the variables that need to work with mama being pregnant and the move and the new job and everything. So yeah. it worked out really well. So we love you guys. I'm saying that for everybody here, I'm sure. But we love you guys. Thank you. Welcome to our family. Thank you. All right. Well, first of all, congratulations to you two. They say it's better to be thought a fool than to open your mouth and remove all doubt, but here I am anyway. <laughs> um, I've worked with Tyler several years. I've just, we're best buddies at the work crew. Um, he's my right-hand man, or I think I'm becoming his right-hand man as time goes on. I mean... It's pretty awesome to see the way he's grown and in all parts of life. Um, and Molly, he's crazy about Molly. Everybody knows that. <laughs> so I'm super happy for you guys. Um, all these emotions and feelings right now, don't ever let those die. Those will be with you forever. It's amazing. That's the way I feel with my life. Um, there's nothing like it. I wanted to read you guys one thing that I found to be pretty awesome. Um, let see if I can find it. It says, when two souls fall in love, there is nothing else but the yearning to be close to the other. The presence that is felt through a hand held, a voice heard, or a smile seen. Souls do not have calendars or clocks, nor do they understand the notion of time or distance. They only know it feels right to be with one another. This is the reason why you miss someone so much when they're not there, even if they're only in the very next room. Your soul only feels their absence. It doesn't realize the separation is temporary. So, body, mind, soul, it's all connected. I thought it was amazing, so. That's cool, Danny, thank you. I hope you guys have a wonderful years together and many kids and a whole bunch of little Tylers and Mollies. I can't wait, congratulations. <laughs> I won't take up your time for long, but this is, this is a funny story. So usually whenever we go to work, Tyler's the first one out, first one doing something all the time. Ever since he started talking to Molly, you'd see him just, hey, just take a picture, send it to Molly, just something he'd do doing something goofy. The other day we got to work and um, we get there and we're all working and I look at the clock and it's five minutes till and Tyler's sitting in the truck. I'm like, That's weird. I walk over there, Tyler, what are you doing? Oh, uh, so I'm not starting until 8.30. I'll be there as, you know, it's got five more minutes. I was like, all right. Come to find out he was on the phone with Molly. He didn't get out of the truck till work started. So, but I thought that was a funny story, but congratulations. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs>
I got a couple. <laughs> I met this guy when he was, what, six months old? All right. I love unique people. So I found in Tyler probably number one on my list. He is one of my favorite people in the whole world. Stories from, I used to tell him he had rocks in his head when he'd do something silly. So there was, of course, an emergency room trip where they had to pull rocks out of his ears because he was trying to refill. Um, um, uh, you know, of course, he gets into the icy hot in my drawer that you rub on your sore muscles, and he doesn't, like, try to put some on his hand. And my sister's babysitting, and I get a call with the frantic Rachel. Oh, my God, I put him in the tub, but he rubbed this all over his whole body, his face. He rubbed it everywhere. So, of course, he's miserable, but he doesn't do anything, you know, halfway. He's got to go all the way. He gets stressed, and he takes walks. You know, he likes to take really long walks. Well, that started when... I don't know, I think Joanne was working days at one point, and I was working nights, and I'm sleeping on the couch, and of course Tyler, I don't think he could barely even talk, pulls a chair from the kitchen table, goes, unlocks the door, reaches up, undoes the chain, undoes the deadbolt, and then of course my neighbor brings him back over to the house and says, is this yours? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that's mine. So we had to figure out some different locking mechanisms and with Tyler. You know, that wasn't going to take long, so it just don't sleep unless he's sleeping. <laughs> he comes downstairs one time, and I'm like, Tyler, aren't you supposed to be in bed? He's like, yeah, but there's a bat in my room. I'm like, Tyler, go to bed. Because, you know, it's really late. And he goes back up, and he comes back down, and he says, there's a bat in my room. I said, all right, let's go catch the bat, you know, playing the fun, you know stepdad. So I go up there and for God's sake, there's literally a bat flying around in Tyler's room. And of course, with Tyler, I'm thinking, ah, that's just Tyler. No, there's a bat in his room. So um, other wandering story, and then I'll be done with the, the stories. My dad needed help roofing his house. So I go over and I'm roofing my dad's house. And of course, at that point, my parents lived in a, a very impoverished neighborhood. And my mom was supposed to be watching Tyler while we were roofing the house. So I'm up on a roof, and I see this police car come up. And the two police officers get out, and they open the back door. And you're, wow, three or four years old, something like that. You know, if they pull Tyler out of the back, you know, early start to a criminal career. <laughs> oh, shoot, the store was about 10 blocks away. And it's a real impoverished neighborhood store. Uh, we were probably the only white family in about a 12-block radius. So they knew where to bring Tyler. <laughs> Is this guy yours? Yeah, it's mine. <laughs> so anyway, dude, you are one of my favorite people in the world. I mean that with all my heart. I love talking to you and your unique pers perspective on everything. And uh, this does happen to be my birthday, and I can't think of a better birthday present than to see you two get together. Um, God's love and peace to you, and I've said enough. Thank you very much. There is more. <laughs> Thank you. I'm not going to embarrass you, but this young lady made me an uncle for the first time. Um, I'm older than Jason, I'm his older brother, and wanted to be an uncle, and they blessed me with you, and you have a special lady there, Tyler, and I want to welcome you to the family. Thank you very much. Well, I have seen you grow a lot, and I was going to say I've seen everyone here has grown a lot, and I've seen so much improvement. Five years ago was way different, and you're a lot grown, and I'm really happy for both of you, and you guys 
enjoy the rest of your lives Thank together. You. I'm Molly's aunt. You were such a beautiful little girl, and uh, my my daughter and you are just ten days apart. We would get together and play, and uh, you were just such a happy child. Always had a beautiful smile on your face, and uh, such a blessing to our family. And your grandmother is watching down today. She's so excited for you. And I'm so excited for you. And I know Tyler's going to be a blessing to you and to your whole family. And I love you guys. And welcome to our family, Tyler. We're so happy to have you. thing I remember about Tyler a lot <clears throat> when uh, my family first moved down here moved into a really dumpy foreclosed house and there's a lot of work that needed to be done and anytime we'd have work day Tyler was the first one to show up always eager to help out always had a smile on his face and I think that's where I learned a lot of my work work ethic from uh, and I just want to appreciate appreciate you for that have a happy life I'm Molly's next youngest sister, Heidi. Just wanted Molly and I have always been really close. We've been we're 13 months apart, and we've always just been really close. I just wanted to say congratulations to both of you. Welcome to the family, Tyler. I'm glad to have you as a brother-in-law. Thank you, Heidi. I love you both. Love you too. I'm happy for you both. I'm glad. Just glad to have Tyler as a brother in law, too. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I'm Tyler's brother, and we've uh, worked together a long time, obviously, and we've drove to work our jobs normally about an hour maybe even two hours away and we have a lot of time to talk and as you all know Tyler and I are about as opposite thinking as possible in a lot of ways but he would always um, make me think a little deeper than I normally think I try to think of things at face value but he thinks past face value so between us talking I've learned a lot, and even through this, him and Molly getting to know each other, um, that topic has been that, driving to work and back, and it's made me evaluate my relationship with Megan and appreciate it more, and I've always considered a woman something a man needs, and I knew I was lacking a lot before I met Megan and I don't know what I'd do without her and I know marriage brings a lot of troubles and struggles but there's a lot more benefits that come with it 
And people are happiest when they're giving. And when two people come together to give their lives to each other, it's going to work out. And I've always thought that's what Tyler was lacking, is someone that would be there for him. And every time he's told the story about Molly throughout the months, he's always appreciated how artistically she can see things and be able to describe them in the way she writes or draws. And she simplifies things that are complex, and that's exactly what I think Tyler needs. And I love you, Tyler, more than anything, and I'm really happy for you and Molly. And Thank you. Welcome to the family, Molly. Hello, I'm Molly's brother, and I'm really excited for you both. Thanks, Lloyd. <laughs> Okay, I'm uh, Tyler's other brother. Uh, <laughs> you know the rest of the saying. Um, <laughs> man, um, wow, time flies. Of course, I'm young saying that, but it's just. I feel like I blinked from last year's wedding, and now we're here, you know. Um, one of the things I was thinking about this morning, I was just like, you know, these pants fit a lot tighter than they did last year. <laughs> I just, uh, <laughs> Tyler, man, I'm really happy for you. Uh, just, I worked for Tyler for a long time, uh, or a few years, and um, like Corbin, we've had a lot of time to talk. Um, I lived next door to him for about a year, and um, that was really difficult. But <laughs> nah, he's great, but we had a lot of time to talk and have a lot of you know really deep conversations. And Tyler kind of reminds me a lot of myself as far as how he thinks. And so when we talk, we just kind of just go down this avalanche of stuff. It uh, doesn't really end, um, but it kind of makes me think of the responsibility a company with, you know, having a wife, you know, you're responsible for this other person and your children, it's like, it makes you think a lot more about yourself, about your actions. You can't just do whatever, you know, because um, it's not just you that your bad decisions will affect. It's you got your, you know, your wife and children behind you. And um, I noticed that w way beforehand, Tyler was uh, doing a whole lot of introspection a lot more than normal, you know, just like really thinking about it and talking about it. And um, seeing other young men, uh, you know, grow like that, it's, it's an encouragement for me, um, you know, to see them take the next step in front of them and not, you know, freeze up. Because I tend to do the same thing, you know, a, a less intense version than Tyler. But, um, you know, I'll look, look ahead and I'll maybe freeze up on, a, on the next step because I'm afraid of, all that over there, but um, so it's just it's a big encouragement to me. Um, you know, love you, man. I'm really excited for both of you. Love you too, Corey. Yeah. Thanks. Oh, you just make such a beautiful couple. I'm so proud of both of you, as I tell you. So proud of you, Molly. You look so beautiful in that smile. And Tyler, I've, I had failed to bond with you from the first time I met you. You first come up and spoke to me and told me who you was. I felt such a love for you then. I tell you, I just, I just thank the world of you. And I'm, a, thank you. I'm really tickled at you to be in our family. I wish you many, many years together and a happy long life. Yes, and I just thank the good Lord for you. I tell you, it's, this life is good. Yeah. Oh, I just, I'm just so, so happy for you, Molly. I'm just, that smile on your face, and I know it's a smile of love. I tell you, when I first 
seniors together. Hi, I'm Molly's cousin, um, and we're 10 days apart, and I have so many fond memories of being with you, and I didn't think this day would come so soon, but I'm so happy for both of you. I don't think I've ever met a man who could ever be better for her, ever, and I know both of our grandmas are just thrilled to see all of this, but I wish that they could be here. But I know that this is just the biggest blessing for all of us. I'm so excited for you to be in this family, and I'm excited for you to be in that family as well. I love your family. They're so sweet, and I don't think this could have been a better match. I love you both very much, and congratulations. I work with Tyler every day and we've gotten to know each other pretty well over the last couple years. And I just wanted to share one of Tyler's quirks and then something a little more serious, but on the job, one thing that he can't resist, anytime he sees anything that slightly resembles a hat, it's on his head. It can become, it's a shard of metal or it's a roof boot or he can pick up, we've got some rings on the job and he makes Mickey Mouse ears and he just turns anything into a hat and just all of a sudden you look down off the roof and there's Tyler with a funny looking hat on just not saying anything you know <laughs> anyway it's just it's fun working with him he brings a, a different aspect to the job and makes life enjoyable and uh, just wanted to share one memory I remember talking to Tyler probably three years ago maybe and he was saying you know I don't know if I'll get married one day or not but I think I will and uh, I think I knew it's going to take, don't take this the wrong way, but I knew it was going to take a special woman for him, and I think he found her. So Molly, you, know, you just be your best for him, and I think you two just fit so well together. I think uh, God brought you together, and that's a blessing. So congratulations. Tyler and Molly, I wish God's richest blessings on your life. You know, it's been, what, 14 years since we first met? It's been a long time. So I'm happy for you, and I just pray that you could go out in life, be a light where you are. You know, when, you, when this honeymoon period is over, real life is going to hit you. And you're going to be facing decisions that you're going to have to decide this way or that way. And it'll affect you. It'll affect others. And I encourage you to, to look, if you look at uh, Abraham's life, you know, Abraham, uh, Genesis 12, 10, uh, there was a famine in the land and he had to get out of the land. He went down to his, uh, uh, Egypt and there he faced a decision. He had a beautiful wife. And he was afraid that the king of Egypt, the pharaoh, would take his wife and kill him. So he told his wife, say to, to them, you're my sister, so that it's going to be well with me. There's two things that you can learn from that. Never make a decision in the flesh. And never make a decision that is outside of God's will. 
So as you go through life and you wonder, what should I do with this? What should I do with that? Never make a decision in your own fleshly lusts. For your own, for yourself. Because his wife was in danger. Other people might be in danger when you make decisions. You're going to face decisions. Always make a decision that is within God's known will. You can find that in the Bible. And always make a decision that is not in your flesh, but according to God's will. May God be with you. Bless you. Thank you. I'm Olin. Um, I've been a friend or acquaintance of Joan and her family for several years. One thing that always impressed me about, or whenever I think about Tyler, it's always, or a lot of times I think about Corbin too. One of my earliest memories of Tyler was riding in an old 80, 80s model Nissan pickup. I was in the front seat, Tyler was driving. And Corbin was in the back seat, and whenever we got to a light, Corbin would say, "Brake, the light coming up. Turn your turn signal on." <laughs> and that's just the way they did. I thought it was kind of funny, but that's the way they went through life. Seems like they always understood each other. I remember riding in the pickup and having discussions about things as well. One time we were talking about or they were talking mostly about the shape of a tower, the shape of some geometric lines, and this went on for like a couple of hours, just like a detailed discussion. To me it was very hypothetical, but to them it was like very concrete and like a science that they were hashing out. <laughs> so it was just interesting. Seems like uh, they've gotten along very well. These brothers are like they... They're made for each other in some way as brothers. So I've appreciated that. Anyway, God bless you both. Thank you. Well, I don't know how well a speaker I'm going to be about this, but I think that uh, I want to wish you two the best of your life. I made a card that I found a, a thing about for my wife one time, and I said that I may not be able to live or love you as long as you live, but I will love you as long as I do. And maybe you can try for that. And the best of luck to both of you. I think you're going to have an interesting life because your family, Tyler, are very interesting people. I know our family, and I know we have some interesting people. So what's going to come of that? <laughs> but we love you, and, and we've, uh, we've come to know Tyler more as he's played with the younger uh, group at uh, Jay's and Robin's house. He'll sit down at the, uh, the little picnic table and his feet will be sticking out about another three feet while he's sitting there <laughs> playing with those kids. So it's interesting. It's going to be. We love you. So we're going to make it a group thing. <laughs> that works. <laughs> happy for any of you that don't know, and I'm a good friend of Brianna and Brian's and Tyler and uh, Molly, and I just want to say I'm so happy for you too. That's, it's wonderful that you can share your lives together and and one of the ways that you do that is by putting God first. And I know that the people I know in this church, every one of them puts God first. 
And there's two other things I feel make up a marriage, and that is trust and love. And I think you all, I'm so happy for you. I think you all are going to have that together and spend your life together. And that's wonderful. I congratulate you. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you. <laughs> well, um, I know Tyler more than I know Molly. Um, that's just because Molly's so quiet, and, and at least when I've been around her. But uh, I think that you're just so sweet, and I really feel like Tyler's blessed. And I was hoping this wouldn't happen. <laughs> uh, but um, I just want to say, you know, some things that I'm a mush ball, sorry. Um, some things I love about Tyler. Uh, we used to work together and uh, sorry. Take your time, Mike. Uh, Tyler just has an amazing mind. And he looks at things more deeply than most people. And it's so refreshing in many ways. Tyler's one of the most honest people I know. Uh, sometimes too honest. But, but uh, in a world of just, you know, anyway, I saw in Tyler a lot of similarities in myself. And... Uh, And uh, I really appreciate when Tyler gets a chance to speak or preach a little bit. And sometimes we have to wait for it to come out. But usually when it comes out, it's good. And it's right on. And it's what every single person in the world is dealing with. And uh, I just appreciate you. I'll try to say a little bit something. It's just been such a blessing to have you, Molly, as a friend, pretty much the closest here at church for the last several years, and I'm really excited to have you as a sister now. God bless you, and I love you both. Sister Connie wanted me to read something. <clears throat> she said, uh, first I would like to say there has never been more joy to get to know these two sweet people. First I wanna, this, these are her words, so just her speaking. Not that I don't think you're sweet. But. I've had time to know Tyler first. With all his help, he has given me building chicken houses and pens and then taking them down, then putting them back up, feeding and watering chickens, then building chicken houses and pens and taking them down. He has been here every weekend, having lots of talks about the future and watching him grow into a man. I always told him he was the boy I never had. Then one day he came to help me and he said that he was courting. I said, with who? I could not hear him very well, she said. And uh, I thought he 
I thought he said, I'm courting Baldy. And I said, who is Baldy? And he said, no, Molly. And he said, and she said, oh, the joy I had in my heart. And then Molly became a part of the weekends, and I got to know Molly and how sweet this young lady she is. I can truly see God's hand in these two people. I'm so happy for you, too. Wish I could be there on this day, but know my heart is there. Love, Sister Connie Jo. And we also, please not, wish you blessings of the Lord and a long and happy life together. One thing I've uh, noticed, just like with Connie here, is, uh, is selflessness on your part in uh, visiting people at the nursing home faithfully and, uh, and helping Connie and, and just about anybody you're asked to help. If you're able, you do that. And that's a, a real blessing and uh, an encouragement and an example to the other young people in the church and to us that aren't so young. And, uh, and also, Molly, you're always cheerful and helpful there with everything you've been asked to do that I know of. And uh, we've known you all for, well, Tyler, since 06. And is it 11? Yeah, 2011. We met you all and appreciate everything. And, and uh, God bless you to both families as well. What better time to go up than when the baby's mad, right? <laughs> it's reality, I guess. Um, I've been thinking the last, like, four or five months now, gosh, what am I going to say when Tyler gets married? Because there's, like, a bajillion stories I could share. And, oh, but it's just, I don't know. It all boils down to Tyler and Molly. And I just, Brother Kevin just mentioned how Tyler's always had a, a love and a selflessness that he gives to others and a way that he connects with others. and Just any, any stranger on the road, he meets them, and they love him instantly. It's just Tyler's just got this way with people and, and this kindness and gentleness that people connect well with and respond well to. And it's a blessing and an encouragement. <laughs> I go to the nursing homes now, and I'm the skinny kid's sister now. I'm, he's, the, he's the main guy, the skinny kid with the glasses. Oh, you're his sister. <laughs> Because he's a celebrity in the nursing homes, and it's just a blessing. But uh, for those of you who don't know, I'm his favorite sister. And, um, yeah. And only sister. Now, she, oh. nobody needs to know that part. It's all right, Tyler. <laughs> and, uh, oh, about, uh, oh, about 25 years ago, the best thing that ever happened to him showed up in his life. He got a sister. And we spent the next, like, 15 years. I spent the next 15 years challenging my role as little sister and I like to hope that it helped him become a little bit of the man he is today. <laughs> oh, we had a lot of fun and we, we butted heads a lot, but at the end of the day we loved each other to death and that's, it's just, it's just a beautiful thing. And anyway, um, you are funny. And yeah, what Brian said earlier, he's just amazing with the children. I could just imagine him being a dad someday. I hope he doesn't get too many Tylers. I don't know what J.D. said, a whole bunch of Tylers. I don't, maybe one Tyler? <laughs> That's probably enough. <laughs> Not sure how many Tylers we can handle, but anyway, um, what else? Well, Molly. What's not to like about Molly? I just, I just couldn't really, I don't know, what, what she's just... It's just amazing to me and just beautiful to see how perfect, it's just perfect, it's just, it's just meant to be. And they complement each other so much and it's just, it's that anchor, she's going to be his anchor and his, it's just, it's just beautiful. I just, I'm just so happy for you guys. God bless you.
A young man said, I'm excited, and I'm thank, thankful to God that I can be here. People have been saying, Lord's willing. Well, thanks to Mr. Michael Russell, who picked me up from my home at the gate, because my van stuck, and it's like, okay, is it Lord's will and March's will? <laughs> I, I had said I was coming. I was the first to say, when you handed me, I'm coming, and my word is my bond, but it isn't about me. Your word has to be bond. That's what this marriage is about. And I got as many, probably not as many stories as you have. You have, you have. But I have lots. But um, like I said, I asked Mr. Russell if it was selfish that I, see, I, I didn't put God first. It was I wanted to get to this wedding. But no, I wanted to get. And Lord willing, his generosity and selflessness, Michael Russell, got me here. I'm honored, I was honored to get invited. I want, I, there's tons of things to say. Blessed, and you'll get them later, you know, write it or, or make a video. But in the simplicity, I'm excited. And you're in my heart and prayers, and you know the story behind that, and that's how I say it. So God bless you all, and I'm praying for all the travelers <laughs> that came here and going. I'm glad somebody made the decision to come up here for me because I was about three times going like, well, I'll go. No, I won't. <laughs> but I, Tyler is one of the first guy friends I had of my own age. <laughs> so I have, like, I just remember all the times we'd just go sing in the basement. And remember that one time we were trying to find the perfect pitch in a room. You're like, no, it's this one. I was like, no, it's this one. <laughs> it was just, I remember singing a lot with him. He's just a really great guy. I mean, you all know that by now, I'm sure. But I just wanted to say I'm really happy for you. And, yeah, God bless you. Thank you, man. Thanks for coming. God bless you. God bless you. Anybody else? Shepherd will supply the
Sorry, Jason. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm going to jump in real quick and say I, um, I just want to say thank you to everybody who helped get this together because this is amazing. The, the building of the brothers worked so hard this week getting it together. And I know Kim, I don't know where Kim's at, but I know Kim and Liz. Kim, I was going to make you. I was going to make everybody give you a round of applause, but I won't. Kim and Liz, thank you so much for your, your help. I know Robin probably feels the same way, that it's a blessing to have that help. So thanks, everyone. At this time, um, if you guys want to, we can go ahead and uh, the family is going to be taking photos, and we can turn our chairs around if you're facing this way and, and sit at your table, and the servers will start getting the food prepared for us. And I, I'm uh, just the same as Joanne. This is a blessing. And it's a blessing to see how much love that Tyler and Molly has given out, and this is just what they get in return. They get a big family that comes for the special day, and we all say thank you for it. So... Well, we'll say the prayer for the meal right now. Again, thank you all for coming. It's been a blessing to be here. Just, uh, all right. Well, let's bow our heads and we'll thank the Lord. For it. Father, we thank you again for your goodness and your mercy to us. We thank you for Tyler and Molly. We ask your blessing upon them in life. Lord, fill them with your spirit. And give them wisdom, Father, as they live together, work together. Lord, if it's your will, they raise children together in a family. May it be a light to this world, Father. Thank you, Lord, again for your goodness. Help us be faithful to you and bring glory to you in Jesus' name. Amen.